Okay, so welcome back. Uh, let's start the second part of the Schubert seminar with uh, Slava Anaprienko telling us about uh, so many sure functions. Please go ahead. All right. So, so far I talked about the sure functions and uh, some of the ways how to represent them, some of the expressions that they have. And then I talked about the factorial sure functions and I showed that they also naturally appear in geometry and uh, in interpolation theory, and they have the very same ways to be expressed. Now in a very um, quick run, I'm going to talk about uh, two more families before I go to the, um, new sure function family that I wanted to talk about. So in a very uh, quick and sketchy way, I want to talk about the dual sure functions, which is yet another family, never ending generalizations of the sure functions, which also depends on the second set of parameters, but this time they are dual and uh, this time they are not a polynomial when you restrict their variables. And the way how they appear naturally is uh, when we are considering the, when we are considering the Hopf dual algebra of our equivariant uh, equivariant cohomology ring, we know that this one is represented, uh, is isomorphic to the ring of the factorial sure functions. It turns out that there is uh, some meaningful way how you can take the Poincaré dual and uh, which corresponds to taking the Hopf dual on the level of the cohomology. And uh, roughly speaking, uh, it means that when you are considering something like uh, a cohomology, Hopf algebra this time is not a ring, it's going to correspond to the dual sure functions, uh, sure factorial functions, which were defined uh, by, by Molev. And uh, so this is uh, another very natural uh, family of functions because it is just uh, the dual to the equivariant uh, cohomology functions. And uh, so this is uh, one way how they appear in nature. And another way how they appear in nature is again in the interpolation questions. And uh, this time it is, uh, interpolation theory. And this time the, the theory is uh, concerned uh, not with the uh, with the poles instead of zeros. And uh, it is a way it, it, you can think that there is a duality between uh, zeros and uh, poles. And uh, you can build a analogous uh, theory to the Newton interpolation of the symmetric functions, but use the poles instead of the zeros. So I, I, again, uh, the dual situation. And uh, again, in a very quick run, I want to um, talk about the expressions. And uh, indeed, as we, as we hope, there is the combinatorial expression where you can represent the, these uh, dual functions as the sum over, over the tableau. And uh, this time the, the weight is getting uh, a little bit uh, harder to write, but uh, one important feature of this new weights is that this time the weights appear in the denominator, which corresponds to the fact that they are now sort of dual and the zeros, you can think uh, jump to be the poles. Um, again, we indeed have the uh, whale formula. So you indeed can write the new functions as the determinant of this time it's going to be certain certain different kind of monomials again this time is uh, having the denominators rather than uh, in the numerators and again divide by the again divide by the van der Mond determinant and uh, this gives us the determinant expression. And again, of course, we have the gem belly where, where we can write the, our function, the, the dual function as the determinant of a complete homogeneous polynomials or dually uh, in terms of the elementary symmetric functions. So this is some properties that uh, we see uh, extend the uh, a lot to many of the generalizations of the sure functions when we considering the 
dual Schur functions, we still have these uh, properties. So, um, give me a second. Okay, so in the rest of the talk, um, I think that I'm going to skip one of the uh, family of functions, which is super symmetric functions, and uh, I'm going to talk about the new family of functions that um, I defined uh, in my last paper. And uh, I want to talk about why I believe that this generalization is natural and why I hope to find um, the same relations to the Schubert cal calculus and interpolation theory as before. And uh, representation theory would be even uh, better, uh, but even for the factorial case, it is not so clear for now. So what is uh, true about the functions that we uh, looked before is going to be extended to the new family of functions. And uh, I guess the, the fourth uh, part of the talk, the three fermionic pure functions. And uh, the name comes from the origin of the free fermionic six vertex model, which I'm not going to talk today about because it is uh, interesting enough to talk about them being sure functions without uh, how you actually can come up with them. And uh, these functions this time, these functions this time depend on the two sets of parameters, so the parameters A and B. So you can think that uh, it is the natural uh, extension of the factorial function. And the, the key feature that this new family of functions uh, satisfies is the, um, the, 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 following, um, the following duality. So these functions with new two parameters, they at the same time, they at the same time generalize the factorial functions Namely, if you set parameter B to be zero, oh, there is a question in the chat, multiplication of the dual uh, functions in the direct sum to the uh, product of the determinant uh, in the, uh, sorry, is the multiplication of this uh, sure function, uh, dual sure functions. Uh, Yeah, um, I don't know. I I can I can think about it at the end of the talk. But uh, thank you for the question, and uh, let me continue. So, so this new family of functions at the same time generalizes the uh, the factorial functions. Namely, if you put the parameter b to be zero, you get exactly the previous uh, simple factorial short functions. And at the same time, if you set parameter a to be zero and uh, just have b, then you have the dual sure functions. So in other words, it is the generalization that at the same time captures the idea of the uh, function and it's dual. And uh, it has uh, two of the parameters which generalize both of these directions uh, at the same time. and. Uh, one uh, the the reason I, I was talking about the expressions is because this new family of functions is having the all three expressions that we had before, so it has the beautiful combinatorial formula where you can you can write the sure function as uh, the the dual the free fermionic sure functions the double factorial, uh, depending on how you want to call it. Uh, again, in terms of the tableau, or which turns out to be even more natural, in terms of the uh, solvable lattice models, which I'm not talking about. And uh, in any of these uh, languages, the combinatorics, the new occurring combinatorics, is capturing combinatorics at the same time of the factorial sure functions and the dual sure functions, which is uh, Pretty surprising given that the combinatorics of the dual sure functions uh, turned out to be 
way different uh, in the paper of Molliff and the uh, description in the tableau turned out to be quite uh, unlike the description of the factorial sure function. Nevertheless, the same property is true for these new functions. Moreover, of course, there is the well formula, which again, somewhat surprisingly, uh, with two parameters, gives you these functions explicitly as the determinant. And this time you have both numerator and the denominator with uh, certain with certain powers and uh, and uh, again you you can divide them by the uh, whale determinant and uh, you you have the formula that at the same time captures the idea of the uh, both of the functions of the uh, dual and the uh, factorial functions and of course, there is also the Giambelli formula, which uh, gives you the function as the determinant, and you can describe it as the determinant in terms of the completely homogeneous polynomials, which again are given by uh, generating series, which generalizes and unifies both the factorial and the dual sure functions, and uh, at the same time, the elementary one. So, now I want to, so now I, I just uh, stated facts, but uh, I want to uh, bring some uh, some motivation why I believe that uh, these functions are natural in uh, in the in the style of the sure functions. So one of the perhaps most important identities that is true about the sure functions is the cache identity. Cache identity is perhaps the ultimate form, the ultimate identity which captures the essence and the, the combinatorics of uh, the corresponding family of the sure functions. And uh, for the classical sure functions, the cache identity, the, the very, very uh, beautiful cache identity is saying that if you are looking at the sum of the products of the sure functions with two different set of variables, they are going to be equal to the explicit and direct uh, explicit product, the, the, Cauchy, the Cauchy product. And the origin of this uh, identity is uh, the how duality, which uh, could be thought as the Peter Whale duality and uh, so the is related to the Peter Whale duality. And the origin of this identity is uh, in representation theory. In representation theory, you can uh, look at the action of the gel. Oh, why did I change it? You can look at the action of the GLN cross GLN. And uh, it turns out that the uh, the symmetric uh, power of the of the representations, which could be which you could write uh, as matrices uh, like this, it should be on the right side, is expanding directly as the representations of the corresponding corresponding modules. So this is just uh, taking characters of this uh, of this uh, identity, which is more interesting than the uh, combinatorial identity for the two functions themselves. So, so this is a, a very, very natural, very, very beautiful, very great identity, which just uh, captures really a lot of properties about the sure functions and uh, the RSK algorithm is giving you the direct bijection here. Oh, yeah, you're right, JLM, thank you. So now the question is, can we extend this uh, uh, Cauchy identity for the factorial functions? In other words, is it true that if you are having the factorial sure function and uh, you sum them with the factorial sure function of the second uh, set of variables, you are getting the explicit product? It turns out to be not the case. It turns out to be that uh, the Cauchy identity does not naturally, there is no a natural Cauchy identity that would uh, connect the factorial sure functions 
And uh, for the longest time, uh, people couldn't find it uh, until Molev did. And it turns out that the, na the natural way to think about this uh, identity on the, in terms of the sure functions is as pairing. In, in fact, you are thinking that you are taking one function and the dual functions and match them together. And then when you sum over all of the lambdas, you are getting the uh, explicit product. And uh, then there is some uh, explicit, explicit product of the, of the similar kind. Um, so in other words, what, what this identity is really telling us is that the sure function and the dual sure functions, we need to pair them together. And it just happened that in the simple situation the when we're considering non-factorial sure functions, they are just self-dual. So you can just uh, pair them with themselves and get the cache identity. So I, I didn't talk about the supersymmetric sure functions, but I really cannot uh, fight the resistance and the temptation to write the cache identity for the supersymmetric sure functions because of how beautiful it is. The cache identity for the supersymmetric sure functions is the extension of the classical identity. And it goes like this. We have the sure functions, which now depend on two sets of variables, on the uh, variables and the super variables. And the cache identity in this um, ultimate form is this, uh, it was proven by Borelli and uh, Ragev. And uh, it follows from the uh, supersymmetric duality. This is the, the ultimate beautiful um, cache identity for the supersymmetric sure functions. You can see how many symmetries there are. And it turns out that uh, it specializes, of course, to the regular cache identity and to the dual cache identity. And so this is a very satisfying piece of, of math. It just looks so symmetric and so right. And uh, perhaps the biggest reason why I believe that the new family of uh, functions that uh, I introduced and uh, <laughs> advertised is because they satisfy the following cache identity, which is uh, very, very uh, striking. It turns out that, um, I guess it's a theorem. If you're considering the supersymmetric versions of the functions that I described to you. Now they depend on two parameters, A and B. And then you have the second set of variables and they depend on parameters A and B. It turns out that we have the cache identity and the, perhaps the most mysterious part is that the right side of the cache identity is independent on both sets of the parameters. In other words, despite our cache identity is, despite both of our functions depend on the infinitely many uh, parameters, which at the same time unite the parameters A and B, nevertheless, the cache identity gives the perfect pairing, which is independent of the nature of the deformations. In other words, the the this uh, these new functions and their natural uh, dual they form the perfect pair pairing which uh, takes uh, get rid of the all of the uh, deformations and and perhaps the most important part in here is that these dual sure functions which originally for example in work of Molly they were just defined as some functions which satisfy the cache identity. Uh, and uh, which you know give, uh, give you the dual uh, Hopf algebra. These functions, their dual, is expressed in terms of the functions themselves. And it was not possible to do without the second set of parameters because you need to change the parameters a and b. In other words, these functions, as the space of these functions, it is self-dual. In other words, if you connect the the factorial functions and the dual functions into one bigger space, then this bigger space contains both, contains the dual functions I expressed in terms of the functions themselves. In other words, this, uh, this space is really contains all of the functions that I described above are special cases. In particular, um, I guess that uh, 
I can just uh, write it uh, real quick that if you, if you, ah, no, I was writing before. They, they generalize uh, both the uh, factorial and the dual sure function. And of course, if you set the parameters A and B to be zero, they generalize the supersymmetric sure functions as well. In other words, this family generalizes all of the sure families that were before, and they generalize it in such a way that only when you have two parameters, B and A, you can see the duality between these two functions, which was not possible to see in, uh, in the case of the dual sure functions and the factorial sure functions. Because for the factorial sure functions, you define a new, a new family, and it's absolutely not clear how they are related to each other. It turns out that only if you have the second set of parameters and you understand that there is a hidden symmetry, you, you, you can understand that uh, this is actually a zero, and this is actually zero A. And of course, once you write something like this, you realize that the, the true identity needs to be A B, and the dual function needs to be B A. And uh, so it is just swapping two parameters A and B, which turns the function into its dual. And uh, so this is very similar to what happens in the McDonald polynomials, where McDonald introduced two polynomials. Uh, McDonald introduced the polynomials, which depend um, on the parameters Q and T, and they satisfy the similar symmetry. When you are considering the cache identity, you are considering the cache identity with the with the second set of uh, polynomials, where you exchange the parameters Q and T. In other words, the second parameter is showing what is the natural pairing and dual. It is exactly the second set of polynomials with the exchange parameters. And uh, I guess I have uh, a couple of minutes more. And uh, in this last couple of minutes, I just want to speculate and uh, something that I'm trying to understand. We know that the factorial sure functions, they describe the Co-invariant um, cohomology of the Grassmannian. We know that the dual functions describe the uh, dual Hopf algebra. Now I'm really curious what what kind of theory do I need to have? perhaps with the action of the two, um, with the two parametrized families of groups on the Grassmannian, such that I would get the new family of the double factorial sure functions of pre-fermionic sure functions. And the feature of this parametrization and characterization would be such that the transition from the cohomology to the homology would correspond to the switch of the parameters from A and B to B and A. In other words, we would just exchange the action of the parametrized uh, groups in order to understand how to jump from one to another. And uh, then this family would uh, connect the properties in a way, the properties of both the cohomology and homology. But this is speculation on which I'm uh, working now and try to learn more about the Schubert calculus. And uh, I was coming originally from combinatorics. And so I, I hope that I will learn something new on this seminar. And that would be the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.